Hey, welcome guys. Uh, so today, uh, let's talk about the uh, uh application of the integral. Uh, I think it's uh, interesting. Although in the routine, it's just a very small topic called the uh, rectifiable curves. It's basically this just uh give you the rigorous proof of the calculus uh, formula for the curves. Okay, so uh. The definition. So definition is that uh, suppose we have a continuous map from gamma, uh, it's called gamma from open uh, closed interval AB to RK, uh, called the curve. This is definition. Okay. So two small case. Uh, two. Uh, if if gamma, you usually if gamma is one to one, then the uh, call it arc. So. If gamma A is called gamma, is the same as gamma B, then this is called closed, okay? Closed curve. Okay, so given any partition, so as I, we said in the integral, we suppose we have partition x0, x1 up to xn of AB. So basically you just part, partition your uh, this to be, this is x0, this is xn, and you call it x1, x2. Right, and then you can compute the uh, uh, distance. Okay, so for example, this curve, uh, this is A, right? This is B. You separate into a different arc, and you compute the distance between it. Uh, this is the so this is the the straight line. Okay, so this is defined to be, uh, let's say, uh, I from one to n, and the gamma x i minus gamma x i minus one. So this is the point in the k dimension, right? So you take the absolute value. So you take the Euclidean distance, okay? And then you can define a gamma lambda. Oh, sorry, this is uh, sorry, this is lambda. Okay, so lambda of gamma defined to be the suprema and suprema of the gamma p, a lambda p gamma. So given a partition. Compute gamma, and then you. This is called lambda. This is the number, right? And the overall the partition. Okay. So if this is infinite, less than infinity, then we call this gamma curve is rectifiable. Rectifiable. Okay. So this is the definition. Okay. So in some special case, in some special cases. Is lambda of gamma, or basically the length of the curve, can be compute. Can be compute by a Riemann integral. Okay, so this is the re, the the first rigorous proof of the uh, the curve. Uh, what is what is the length of the curve? Okay. So the special case, uh, what we gonna to prove is that uh, gamma is a uh, Continuous, uh, continuously differentiable. So come from it's continuously. So actually, one can define the length of the one can define the length of the curve. Just define to be this soup if the this lambda is finite. But in some special case, this lambda can be computed by a real integral. Okay. So basically, this is basically what what why I just want to say that the gamma prime is continuous. So not just derivative, but the, it's the derivative is continuous. Okay, so theorem. So if gamma prime is continuous on A B, then gamma is rectifiable. So basically, what I'm just saying that uh, this lambda will be less than infinity, and this lambda can be easily computed by like the absolute value or the norm of the derivative dt and from a to b. So this is your calculus formula. Okay, so this theorem is what we got to prove. Okay, so let's go to the proof. Should not be difficult. Uh, all right, so let's working on, suppose you get uh, two points partition this and uh, you can easily get this uh, gamma xi from gamma xi minus one this is just 
uh, gamma prime t dt xi minus one xi. So remember this gamma is a vector, right? So two vectors, this, this guy's there, so equal to xi minus one xi gamma prime t dt, right? So this is for each i. So if you do a summation, you get a lambda p gamma for any, for this partition is less than equal to a b gamma prime t dt, right? Because uh, it's just summation i from one to, uh, okay. And this integral become this, and uh, this is the general part. So if you take, a, so this is a finite number, right? Because this is continuous. So the absolute value is bounded. Continuous on convex is bounded. So this guy is finite. And you can take a soup. So basically you prove that uh, this guy is less than, less or equal to this. Okay, so both basically we prove one direction that uh, they are the, uh, we prove one direction that, that they are, so they are rectifiable less than infinity. But uh, we, so we need to prove the another direction. Okay, so which comes the, the, the part, the difficult, uh, the interesting part. Okay, so we need to prove the upside, uh, the opposite uh, inequality, right? So suppose for epsilon greater than zero, now coming to your analysis. And uh, we know that uh, uh, this gamma price is uniformly continuous. Okay, and the reason is that what we just what I just proved in the, I think it's in the chapter four in the continuous section that uh, so continuous function on compact set is uniformly continuous. So this is a key that uh, you need to. This is why you need to assume that gamma price is continuous. Right. Actually, in this in this part, I, I think you don't need to. Right. But in this part, you need. To. So that means uh, is this the epsilon delta greater than zero when uh, s minus t less than delta, then your gamma t minus gamma s the the distance is less than epsilon. Right. So this delta is universal. This is called uniformly continuous. Okay. So uh, let's see. You have partition. And uh, let's say you choose, so you can choose all delta xi less than delta, uh, delta all the partition distance, right? Less than all the partition difference less than this delta. So this will give you a constraint that uh, your gamma prime of t, right? Less or equal to gamma prime of xi plus epsilon, right? So for any t greater or equal to xi minus one, less or equal to xi, right? Because you now you're the, the, this uh, uniform continuous condition make that all for all t, uh, sorry, for all st, if their distance is less than delta, then their difference must be less than epsilon. So that uh, now you force these two, the distance between these two is less than delta. Right, so any t between that set and the any t between t any t between that and the x i their difference is their distance difference is less than delta. So you must have this. Okay, so now everything is easy. You just uh, take the integral from x i to x i minus one to x i. So we get this. Uh, right. This is less or equal to gamma prime x i and the delta x i. Delta xi is xi minus xi minus one plus epsilon delta xi, right? So this is just uh, through the integration. And, uh, right, so let's change it. Let's make this this guy to be gamma prime of t plus gamma prime of xi minus gamma prime of t dt xi minus one xi e. Right, so now you see at least this difference give, give you least, right? So you just take the absolute value plus epsilon delta xi. So here comes the trick because these guys are constant. Oh, sorry, so, so you can just write these guys these. Right, so just very trivial. Now you see the uh, triangular inequality. So triangular uh, triangulated the, these two parts. Right? So get this. This is what why analysis is interesting. 
because you can make your intuition 100% uh, correct. So gamma prime of xi minus gamma prime t dt. Okay. So the first term is xi minus one xi gamma prime of t, and this time these these guys these two. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's do it the uh, turn by turn. So let's focus on this term. So gamma xi prime minus gamma t prime dt right, is forced to be a, another epsilon, right? So these two, this term, this term is actually bounded by another epsilon delta xi, right? As I said, these two are bounded by epsilon. So in this term, uh, let's, let's uh, preserve this term. Okay, so let's see. So now we got the, uh, uh, let's see. Okay, so, so, so this term is a derivative, right? Can be just directly compute. But right? notice that this term is different. This term has an absolute in heat. So we don't know how to compute in general, but this term don't, right? So this term is just derivative and the two points. So this guy just derivative, uh, the absolute value of gamma xi minus gamma xi minus one plus two epsilon delta xi. Okay, because these guy, these guys, these, and then these guys, these, okay? And then this guy just becomes a gamma xi minus gamma xi minus one and then take the absolute value. Okay, so we have this. So let me just write right hand, left hand side. So what we gonna, what we just prove is this. Okay, so let's add from sum from i from, so let's just write it in words. So sum from i to one to two to n, right? So the left hand side become a, b, sum of the partition, okay, this. Is that so equal to this? Plus two epsilon, right? Delta xi will just be b minus a. So what is this? This is the partition p gamma. Okay. So we just prove. So let me just let me just uh uh sorry. Let me just add another page and then write everything. Okay. So what we just prove. Or given any partition p, we always have this. Okay, and uh, this epsilon can be can be choose right. So epsilon can be arbitrary small. So epsilon can be arbitrary small. So if you make epsilon to be small, then you will deduce that uh, this guy will less than this, right? Okay. Once you choose epsilon to be small, then you get this, right? Because if you take su by two sides, then this epsilon can be arbitrary small. Okay, so you prove another, uh, you, okay. So let me just, so this guy, right? This guy by definition is less than this. This lambda gamma plus this, right? So now you have a number, a number which is less or equal to something, but plus any arbitrary arbitrary number. So this number must less than or equal to this. Otherwise, if this number is greater or equal to, is greater than lambda gamma a little bit, then I will make epsilon to be arbitrary small and then violate this equality. Okay, so we got this. So now remember that we just proved both direction. In, in the previously, we just proved these directions. And uh, in this, we use a uniform continuous to prove these directions. So go back to the uniform uh, original theorem, then we just prove this theorem. So this is what this is the true calculus formula. In a calculus, actually, you need to assume that your derivative is continuous. So you can use the uniform continuous property to prove that uh, in the calculus, your arc length formula is actually this. So that's why in the, maybe in the uh, and the engineering mass in your three dimensional, you can easily compute a curve by this. 
So this is the formula where they come from. So the important uh, assumption is that this gamma prime is continuous. Okay, so this is the, I think this is the missing part in the calculus that uh, people don't actually uh, read the proof. So the proof is very neat and uh, very, you need to bound something and do another proof one direction of equality and prove another direction of equality, which is a very interesting. Okay, so I'll see you guys uh, next video, bye-bye.